So, every home studio setup I've been to and seen online is different. My room might be bigger than yours, your layout might be more functional than mine, and I'm 100% sure that most of the gear we use is not the same. But at the end of the day, all these differences don't really matter. Your home studio is supposed to be different. It's supposed to be your creative space and should be made just for you. I always say your home studio should give you the same feeling your music gives you. Are you comfortable? Do you understand your gear? But most importantly, do you feel inspired? Today I want to take you on a gear tour of my home studio. I want to take you through every piece of equipment I use and tell you exactly why I think it's ideal to have. Note, you don't need all of these things to make great music, but if you could, I definitely would. So hey guys, welcome back to another video and if you're new here, my name is Edward Smith and welcome to my YouTube channel and in today's video we're going to be looking at my home studio setup mainly focusing on the gear and the equipment that I use. Before we jump into things though, I'd first like to ask you to please smash that subscribe button down below if you haven't already. Secondly, the links of all the products that we're going to be going through in today's video will be down in the description below and then last but not least, make sure you hang around all the way till the end of this video because I'm sure you're going to be liking some of the accessories that I have in my home studio setup that you can get that will really help make your workspace a lot more functional. But without any further ado, let's jump into this video and see what studio gear and equipment I use. So the first piece of studio gear that we can have a look at that I use all the time are my condenser microphones. And as you guys know, I am a singer songwriter and vocalist and whether I'm recording vocals for a video or for original music, I'm always using these ones specifically. And the ones that I use most often is the Rode NT1A, the Neumann TLM 102 and this new edition Melon Audio $50 microphone. I use the Neumann TLM 102 for all of my original songs because it is the best quality. It's really nice and clear, picks up my voice very nicely and because it is a Neumann microphone you can just expect the best quality. When it comes to just general singing, plotting down ideas, maybe recording some acoustic guitar, I like to use the Rode NT1A because it's also a very good sounding microphone but the one I have the most fun with is the Melon Audio microphone because it isn't as serious, I can really get a different pickup of my vocal and a lot of the times I use two microphones like the Neumann TLM 102 with this microphone and just get some different types types of vocal takes and use that and play around with that to create a whole unique sound. So for me it's really a fun microphone to use, I don't use it all the time but it is a nice new addition that I have been using a lot recently. And because I am in a home studio setup environment where you don't have the best acoustic treatment or you just want to get a nice dry vocal, I like to use this Melon Audio pop screen filter that I got about a week ago that really just helps have a lot less reflections of the walls and things like that and it covers up my microphone nice and it fits with all three of these microphones and it's really just a simple unique way of already needing that pop filter in the front and just getting some additional coverage from any reflections on the wall so if you're in a home studio setup this is definitely something I think you need to get. The next piece of studio gear that we're gonna have a look at that I recently upgraded two weeks ago is my Arteria MIDI keyboard and as you guys know before I had an Alex 49 Plus from Nectar I'm a big fan of 49 key MIDI keyboards I think that 25 key MIDI keyboards are too small the keys are too plastic and I think that 61 key and 88 key MIDI keyboards are more for piano players if you're someone that's just learning how to play with the MIDI keyboard maybe building some drums and just really being a lot more creative you don't need more than a 49 key MIDI keyboard and in this case I have an Arteria Keylab 49 MK2 which is an expensive MIDI keyboard but it is really a quality product. I love the all black design, I love the wood finish on the side, I love the feel of the keys and the drum pads. For me it was just the upgrade that I needed from the Nectar Impact Plus to really just get the most out of my MIDI keyboard creativity. Moving on to the studio monitors that I have in my home studio setup. As you guys have probably seen in my previous videos, I have a pair of Yamaha HS 
8s and a pair of Yamaha HS5s. A lot of you guys are probably asking, why do you have two pairs of studio monitors? Is it necessary? And the answer is no, it's not. Firstly, I just think it's awesome for variety when it comes to mixing and mastering a song where I can work on the HS5s and really get my mix and everything to sound great and then just use the HS5s because I want to have that reference and see how good it sounds on these smaller type studio monitors. I also like the look of having both of them so that could also be the reason I've got both but overall they are fantastic studio monitors and I think that for the price if you can get an 18 studio monitor these are the best to go for and if you have the price for just a 5 inch monitor you can't go wrong with the Yamaha HS5s either. Another piece of studio gear that's related to my studio monitors and could be seen as an accessory is my Mackie Big Knob and I use this to connect my Yamaha HS8s and HS5s to the same system so that when I'm using the HS8s and I want to use the HS5 straight away I just push a button and it switches perfectly the volume works for both of them you can't listen to the studio Studio monitors at the same time but like I said if I'm busy with the HS5s and I just quickly want to switch over and even adjust the volume using the same system this allows me to do that and allows me to jump between my studio monitors and really make my whole workflow a lot more efficient. Moving on to the next piece of studio gear that I use all the time and that is my headphones and as you can see I've got two pairs here the Bay Dynamic DT770 Pros and the Audio-Technica ATH M50Xs and the honest truth is both of these headphones are amazing for me and I just can't pick which one I would go with. I love the Bay Dynamic DT770 Pros, they're super comfortable, they sound amazing and they really give me a nice flat frequency response but the fact that I've been using the M50Xs for the last six months I actually know my sound in these headphones just a little bit better. But I am trying to move over more to the Bay Dynamic DT770 Pros, but so far these are both connected to my audio interface. They're both ready to go. And I like to jump between the two as well just to get a nice reference from each headphone like I do with my Yamaha HS8 and HS5 studio monitors. So I think it is important to jump around and really hear what your song sounds like on all these different devices. Moving on to the next piece of studio gear that's probably the most important important in a home studio setup and that is my audio interface and you guys are probably wondering where is the audio interface and the truth is it is in my rack mount currently. I use the Focusrite Scarlett 18i20. It's not the newest Focusrite audio interface but for me it really does a good job. I really like the fact that it has eight inputs so it allows me to do a lot more when it comes to connecting a few more microphones, guitars, all these different kinds of things. I like a rack mount unit because for me it just looks better and it helps me to build up my studio in the future and so far in terms of the mic preamps it really sounds nice and clear and I will probably upgrade in the next six months to a year to get something better so that my studio is slowly but surely getting better every single day. And the last piece of studio gear that's probably the most important in any home studio setup and that is my laptop and in my case I use a Dell XPS 9570 it comes with 32 gigabytes of RAM it has a terabyte SSD and it has a nice i7 processor so everything is moving fast the RAM helps all my plugins and everything to flow quite nicely and as I told you guys before I am using Cubase as my music production software in DAW so everything works perfectly on this laptop is it the best laptop for music production no because Dell has had some issues especially the XPS when it comes to latency and things like that but in my case I haven't had any struggles and thus far all my music all my recordings for videos all these kinds of things have gone through this laptop and it's done a very good job. So to end of this video I just want to go through some of the accessories that I have in my home studio setup that I'm sure a lot of you guys are going to like to have especially in your specific workspace and some of the accessories that I found that's really useful consist of my microphone boom arm which really just helps me make my whole space a lot more functional when I need to record vocals I just bring it in front of my face record my vocals and put it back away I also like my melon audio foam pop filter which is an accessory that I mentioned in the beginning of this video that I think is ideal for any home studio setup up especially if you don't have acoustic treatment. I also use my Mackie Big Knob like I also mentioned it is important for me to have that because I have two pairs of studio monitors and I need to be able to jump between the two and really get the most out of my setup with this piece of gear. And the last accessory that's probably the most underrated in my entire home studio setup is my 8 unit power rack. I love this setup where I can connect all my studio monitors, my laptop, my lights, audio interface into one unit with all the switches and 
it just allows me to switch off studio monitors without having to go at the back and switch them off and have everything working right at my fingertips while I'm at my workspace. So that brings this video to an end of all the gear, equipment and accessories that I currently have in my home studio setup and that I use on a daily basis. And just a reminder that if you're interested in any of this gear, the links are all down in the description below. If you have any questions about today's video, just leave a comment down below and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please do give it a thumbs up and if you loved it, subscribe down below and I will see you for another video next time.